Hey guys, welcome to another great game of CDH. I hope everyone is enjoying the March of the Machines pre-release this weekend. I know there are some commanders from this set that I really want to try, and we'll be definitely getting some gameplays of them. Also, I want to thank Callahan from the Mind Sculptors. And in case you didn't know, they're another great CDH channel, and it was a blast to get a game in with them. And lastly, I'm happy to announce my partnership with Monarch Media. Yeah, your boys in the big leagues here, what up? I'm excited to be a community ambassador, and while I can't share details just yet, there's definitely going to be some spice coming up in the future, so stay tuned. And if you want to check out what they're all about, I'll have the links down below. Also, have you heard the news? Your favorite CDH YouTube channel has released some cool merch. And if you're interested in picking up some sweet new apparel, come check us out. Also, if you like what you see, consider joining our Patreon, as with your help, we can keep producing the videos you enjoy. And if you want to play with us, hop on our Discord. We have an ever-growing community that loves to talk MTG or whatever else strikes our fancy. And we'd love to meet new people. All right, block there. Kill that. Oh, that is trample. Guess I'm just dead on board. Starting us off is a veteran to the channel. Zing has brought Shurikai, Genesis Engine. This was actually his Urza, Lord Protector deck. And another surprise, it's actually not a humility control list. It is a straight scepter list though, and relies on a creature sub package, as Zing likes this version a little bit better. This is an Azorius artifact deck that uses dramatic scepter combo for not only infinite mana, but it allows him to draw his deck and win with Thassa's. We had played a few games that night, and this deck certainly impressed me. Next up is Teddy on Evelyn the Covetous. And while I originally dismissed it, this deck is fast, lean, and powerful. It actually has a turn 1 World Gorger combo win with Evelyn, which is insane. And as you have Underworld Breach and Thassa's as backup, this deck is always a threat. In the third spot is Cal, who is playing one of their favorite, Arden Silas Wren. This is an Esper equipment list, and has the normal goodies that Esper can provide, with an added equipment package. It plays a ton of non-standard interaction and is a breath of fresh air in the CDH metagame. And bringing up the rear, we have Hidden Planet X, who has brought a new commander from March. Heliod Radiant and Dawn is a new Azorius commander that's all about wheeling and dealing. Heliod's backside is one of the strongest creatures you can have, and when you cast a wheel, it makes all your spells basically free. This deck can really go off, and at worst, it's just an ETB creature that can rebuy your Mystic Remora or Mystic Study. And it turns itself into a Vidalcan Orrery at worst. But without further ado, let's get on to the gameplay. Hidden actually does have a pregame effect, as he puts a Gemstone Cavern into play, exiling a Mox Diamond. Zing has a Command Tower and a Turn 1 Fish. Teddy plays and cracks a Polluted Delta, grabbing a tapped Watery Grave, passing after that. Cal also has a quick turn 1, just playing a Windswept Heath as land. Hidden plays a Marsh Flats and cracks it for a Tundra. And for 2 mana, he casts a Talisman of Progress. No! I, you, we you, have, you did the thing! Well. Did the fish. <laughs> you absolute monster. <laughs> Zing untaps and pays for his fish. He draws a Windswept Heath off the top and casts an Esper Sentinel. Although Hidden is quick to respawn with a Mental Misstep. Oh, sadness ensues. Okay. <laughs> yep. Uh, well, maybe I will get uh, a mental messed up off the top. I doubt yeah. it, but it has a, a really slim chance. Also, Cal takes this opportunity to crack their fetch for a Tundra. Teddy plays a Command Tower and casts an Unmarked Grave, giving another card to Zing. All right. I wonder what card I'm going to get <laughs> in the graveyard. Is it World Gorger? It is. Awesome. Uh, hate that. I play, I play World Gorger in my, my Tinma Jessica list. I had to go get the Foil Border list one just for it. I mean, I know it's not the greatest combo, but it, it's so much fun. So fast. I, 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 it, it, it's such an awful combo, and I love it. <laughs> I feel like in Evelyn, you, there's no reason not to. But yeah. mm -hmm. Cal plays an Ancient Tomb as land and takes two to cast a Stoneforge Mystic, who on ETB finds a Skull Clamp. Cal then casts the clamp and gives another card to Zing. Hidden unfortunately doesn't have another land and just passes. Zing lets his fish go and plays a basic island. 
He needs to empty his hand of all those extra cards, and for two, cast a Talisman of Progress. Now only having to discard a Seagate Restoration due to hand size. Teddy casts a Lotus Petal and decides to go for it with an Animate Dead. The Animate Dead does resolve and brings back the World Gorger, which enters and exiles all of his other permanents. This then puts a Sack Trigger from the Animate Dead on the stack. And responding to that, Hidden tries to phase it out with a March of Swirling Mist, although Teddy fires back with a Pact of Negation. Zing then also responds with the Dress Stone, to which Teddy actually has an answer as he bounces an island back to hand to daze the Dress Stone. Although luckily for the table, Teddy has cast at least 3 spells so far, and Zing is able to cast the Mind Break Trap for free, choosing to exile the daze as he actually wants the Pact to resolve to remove Teddy on his next turn. The daze is then countered with Zing drawing a card off the ETB. The pack then counters the march and the dragon is sacrificed, but due to the dress down, it loses its death trigger to return everything, and Teddy is literally left without a board and has to pass after that. What a... <laughs> what a game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I had to go for that though, you know? I mean, with with double counter, I yeah, 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 that's fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I I think I have to pass my turn now. <laughs> okay, okay, you know what? Fair. Cal plays a Forbidden Orchard and taps it to give Hidden a Spirit. Cal casts their commander Arden and then moves to combat. And using the Arden trigger, Cal puts their Skull Clamp on Hidden Spirit, killing the creature and drawing Cal two cards with Cal passing and discarding an island due to hand size. Hidden is still short on lands and has to pass again. Zing draws an Urza Saga and for 3 casts a Rustic Study. It resolves and Zing follows it up with a portable hole to exile the Skull Clam. Alright, and then I will pass. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm dead. I lost. <laughs> Very unfortunate. Yeah. yeah. Very unfortunate. Fle flew a little too close. Cool, to cool. Cal shocks in a hollowed fountain and then takes two more to activate a Stoneforge Mystic. They put a Helm of the Host into play and move to combat. And here's a cool interaction I actually didn't know. The Helm of the Host actually triggers every combat. And if there is a creature attached to it, you get a copy. And if not, nothing else happens. But this allows Cal to stack both the Ardent and the Helm's trigger. So they can equip the Mystic and let the Helm trigger resolve getting a token stone forge, which lets them tutor out another equipment. Cal ends up finding a sword of fire and ice, and at their end step, hidden intuitions. Hidden can't pay for the Rhystic, and is actually not sure what he wants. He decides on a Mystic Remora, Mana Vault, and Soul Ring, with Zing giving him the Mana Vault. Hidden on his turn casts the Mana Vault and gives a card to Zing. He follows this up with his commander, Heliot the Radiant Dawn. He actually does pay for the Rhystic this time, and the commander resolves, who on ETB grabs the Mystic Remora back to hand. Zing draws and gets another lore counter on his Saga. He plays an Ancient Tomb as land and takes two to cast his commander, Shorakai, who resolves and Zing then activates it to draw two, discard an Oswald Fiddlebender and get a pilot, ending his turn with the Manifold Key. With Cal at Zing's end step, activating their token Stoneforge, to put the Sword of Fire and Ice into play, also giving Hidden a Spirit in the process. Cal plays an Exotic Orchard as land and equips Arden with the Sword. They then move to combat and trigger both Arden and the Helm. Cal doesn't want to move anything and just makes another copy of their Stoneforge, this time grabbing the Sword of Hearth and Home. And before declaring attackers, Cal swords Zing's pilot. They do pay for the Rhystic and wanting to make it a little more awkward, Zing responds with the Flusterstorm. Cal would only have to pay 2, but decides not to, and just declares attackers. They send Arden and Hidden, and the Stoneforge copies go at Zing. Hidden does chump with the Spirit, and Cal is done after that. Hidden untaps, and takes one off his tap vault. He starts off casting his Mystic Remora, and gives a card to Zing. Hidden then decides he needs to start making some plays, and casts a Dramatic Reversal giving another card over. Cal doesn't want Heliod to flip and responds to this with a spell pierce. 
they give a card to both Hidden and Zing, with Hidden responding by casting a Fierce Guardianship. He gives another card to Zing, and the Dramatic Versal then resolves, with Hidden flipping his commander. Unfortunately for Hidden, he actually wanted Zing to draw even more cards to make his stuff cheaper, and Hidden decides to just pass instead. Zing untaps, draws, and then floats a mana before sacrificing his Saga. He ends up finding a Mana Crypt and follows that up with a Teferi Time Raveler, which really screws up Hidden's game plan. Zing does give a card to Hidden, with Hidden then firing off a delay to hopefully delay this walker. Hidden does give a card to Zing, who responds with a Force of Will, exiling an Imposter Mech and giving a card back to Hidden. Unfortunately, Hidden is out of answers, so Cal responds with Silence. They give Zing and Hidden a card each, but with all the cards Zing has drawn, he has an answer as he casts a Force of Negation. Hidden doesn't draw anything off this, and unfortunately the fairy does resolve. Zing then casts a long-term plans, following that up with Shorkai to draw two and discard one. He still needs to draw one more and down ticks the fairy to bounce his own crypt and draw. He then casts a Grim Monolith and a Displacer Kitten. He can replay his crypt to trigger the cat to flicker to fairy. The fairy can then down tick again to pounce his crypt and draw him a card. This lets him draw his deck and float a lot of mana, choosing to bounce his talisman every few times for some colored mana. And with an empty library, Athasa's Oracle wins him the game. Game review. Man, that was a cool game. I know Teddy flew a little too close to the sun on his combo attempt, but with a pact and a daze, I would have gone for it as well. I really thought Arden was sweet as well. If not for that portable hole, Cal was going to draw a lot of extra cards, and with the free Stoneforge every turn, they were going to get out of hand pretty soon. Although no one drew quite as many cards as Zing, who had the whole trinity of CDH, Mystic Remora, Esper Sentinel, and Aristic, he was able to draw whatever he needed, and Hidden wouldn't have minded as much if he could have found another land. He had two whole turns where he could have sneaked a Heliot in, and if he had flipped him a little earlier, he was holding up a game plan to draw even more cards. But I guess that's just how some games go. Thanks to all the players, and I'll see you guys later.